moderator. Do you hear me? Yes, I can yes, hear you. Okay, so, sorry for this. Uh, I got some messages here on the screen that uh, there is no line. Thank you. So, yeah, once again, uh, Alex Transer, um, I will try to give you some some insight to the uh, to the manufacturing of the AV uh, particles uh, for gene therapy purposes. So, first of all, um, I am an analytical chemist by training, uh, working with. Uh, process development, analytical method development for more than 30 years. At the moment, uh, managing director of Sartorius BS operations. And uh, as a company, we are active in this field also for more than 25 years. Our main goal at, at every time was actually to serve gene therapy uh, market. So maybe first uh, to give you some idea about what we are doing in our company. Uh, the columns which we have uh, developed a purpose designed to serve a gene therapy industry, meaning uh, to manufacture uh, any kind of uh, gene therapy vector, nucleic acids, um, with aim, aim to improve the recovery of the target product. And with some of the vectors like measles virus, we can indeed improve the recovery even by three times, meaning instead of 10% recovery uh, during the purification, we can uh, kick out, uh, kick up this even for three times more than 30%. When we are talking about the AV, there would be a slight improvement of the recovery, but there would also be uh, improved uh, 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 improvements in capacity when comparing uh, our products with traditional uh, technologies. And as you see later on, it also uh, allows for much better resolution. Uh, so these are uh, columns which would start with 1 ml, a scaled down model. Uh, the biggest would be 40 liter. We can also provide 96 well plates packed with just the same material, 24 well plate and so on. And the second family of our products are analytical systems, uh, the PET-FIX uh, liquid chromatography system, uh, together with monolithic columns. Any other column can be connected with, uh, with, uh, with this system, and vice versa. These columns can be also connected to any liquid uh, chromatography equipment. The sub-part of our activities would be process development, analytical method development, we have more than 20 years of process development, uh, purifying viral particles of many different uh, types and sizes uh, from many different uh, cells and also some natural materials. One of the project we took part in is uh, with Avexis at the time now Novartis. Uh, so we helped to co-develop manufacturing process to produce Zolgesma. Uh, we started to cooperate with Avexis back in 2016. Uh, we had very, very short uh, uh, timeline to develop the process uh, from the centrifuge at the time uh, to industrial chromatography based uh, process to produce uh, many, many doses. Um, important to point out here is that this process is based on cation exchanger capturing step, which will be one of the topic of my today's presentation. So we are now um, continuously supply uh, our columns to manufacture Zolgesma. Um, there are a lot of discussions if uh, a process can be a platform, a process can be a platform or cannot be a platform. And um, after so many years working in the field, I would say we are still far away uh, to uh, provide a platform AV manufacturing process. Why this is so? Uh, we have different uh, cell cultures, we have different serotypes. We have different media, 
we have different transfections. Uh, so already this results in many different uh, uh, purities of the harvest uh, or the impurities in the harvest. Secondly, we may have uh, the AV bursted out of the cell, meaning AV would be extracellular. And in such case, the process could be quite straightforward. Uh, no need for lysis. Uh, this is really a uh, very useful approach. Uh, it prevents a lot of headache, where, especially with scaling up. If we would get such a project uh, to be developed, we would basically perform no lysis, no need for lysis. We would also avoid any TFF. We would avoid free stowing. We would just uh, go with the harvest directly to the chromatographic column after filtration to remove the cell debris. Uh, we would capture the AV by kind of hydrophobic, hydrophilic interaction, which allows for size separation. So this is not size exclusion. It's kind of size separation. All the proteins, free proteins, all the free DNA, uh, or other impurities would be in the flow through. Just AV with some other particles would bind. Uh, we would then pull uh, the AV from the first column and we would go directly to the second column. Can be affinity, can be cation exchanger. Uh, as we are removing most of the impurities, uh, the cation exchanger can be small column. The same, uh, the OH can be small because uh, we are just uh, binding the viral particles. And then the third step, which would be the separation or uh, concentration of the full capsid. Uh, some further details you can find uh, with Maya's uh, poster, if somebody would be interested in this. Um, as the process is quite straightforward, quite simple, uh, you can count on more than 80% recovery of the full AEV from the harvest to the to the end. Uh, the end means before step filtration. If we need to lyse the cell because the AV would be in the cell, or most of AV would be in the cell, we are producing a lot of chromatin structures uh, to prevent at least partially uh, to produce chromatin structure. So chromatin being a complex between highly charged histone proteins and highly negatively charged DNA. So to at least partially prevent this, we prefer to perform lysis with the salt. Usually this would be 0.5 molar potassium salt. If this works, uh, it is easier then to further purify the AV. If not, we need to combine with detergent. And we know detergent are not nice, especially when you need to scale up your process. They for micelles, they may clog your filters. So you'll maybe you'd maybe need to replace uh, or to use quite a number of filters to filter your 100 liter harvest material. Um, yeah, so after lysis, uh, then there is need to remove the chromatin structures to prolong the column life uh, to enable higher uh, capacity. This can be done by flocculation. It can be done with more traditional TFF DNA treatment. We also provide nowadays solid phase extraction approach. In some cases, we we'll just go to cation exchanger. So if you have, uh, if our harvest is uh, good, so if if our expression is is good, we get a nice amount of AVs. Then you don't even need to think about these steps. You just go to the cation exchanger, you in such case need a relatively big column. So after chromatin removal, again, it would be affinity or cation exchanger. And then the last step, uh, very similar to the one before, more traditional, small scale, maybe ultra centrifuge. And then when you need to do scale up, uh, you may uh, test different ligands, uh, which is strong cation exchanger, and then two ligands, Prima S and Prima T, which are uh, multimodal uh, ligands based on weak anion exchanger. And now comparison of the second step. Uh, so 
after you uh, harvest your material, you would do some clarification, as already mentioned, uh, cell debris removal with some filters. And then the next step can be uh, the TFF DNA treatment. Uh, in many cases, uh, this may be avoided and you just go to directly to the cation exchanger. Uh, but due to the use of uh, affinity column, we perform this step uh, the same. And then we divided the sample. Half of the sample went for uh, purification on the cation exchanger and half of the sample went on a capturing on affinity uh, resin. So to capture the material on the cation exchanger, you need to lower the pH for about uh, till about or uh, at about uh, to about four uh, P pH four or maybe pH three point eight, and then you filter the stuff. You go to cation exchanger and the same filtration, and then affinity. We've performed the comparison on the two small columns, one ml columns, and then the polishing step would be on the strong anion exchanger. If you now look on the capturing chromatogram, uh, we get in the salt gradient with the cation exchanger, uh, in this case linear, which can be then later on converted to the step. We get nice peak, which we collect from here to here, and you would go to the QA column. The same, uh, we get quite nice peak, uh, which we collect from here to here, and we go on the nine exchange car. And now the polishing, um, the dot uh, uh, UV 200 signal represents affinity material. We see that uh, the affinity material from the QA looks a bit sooner. Maybe this is not that important, but what we can see is that we have the full capsid to be a bit lower than the full capsid of the cation exchanger, and also so-called damaged or dense capsids also to be higher with the affinity. So it looks that uh, we produced with affinity a bit more damaged, damaged material, damaged uh, AAV. Uh, one of the reasons, because of very low pH, uh, which is needed to elute the capsid from the affinity column, usually being between 2.5 and 3. We repeated the same uh, loading. Uh, so the cation exchanger, uh, we don't know what was going on with the affinity column, so I would not really take the second step from affinity column into account. Uh, but with the cation exchanger, as you will see later on, we were calculating the average of the two, uh, of the two repetitions. And now the most important part of the comparison, uh, and this is the recovery. We are measuring the recovery by two different methods, the DPCR method and also by chromatography. So the, the black uh, bar represents the recovery of the of the cation exchanger column. Uh, the lighter bar represents the recovery on the affinity column. So we see, of course, the same material clarification, TFF. The recoveries are the same, and then we go next step, and this is sample preparation. Uh, in the sample preparation, uh, it looks that we are losing a bit more material with the cation exchanger and less material with affinity. The capturing steps are quite the same. Uh, we The step recovery is quite the same. But then we have a polishing step where the recovery on the, uh, on the QA after the SO3 after the cation exchanger is much higher than after the affinity. Quite the same uh, picture we get with the liquid chromatography. Uh, so again, the same recoveries after the first two step. Then separate preparation, again, a cation exchanger lower than affinity. Uh, capture step by chromatography is a bit higher with the cation exchanger, but the most important, the last step, on the QA column, the material coming from cation exchanger allows for 
higher recovery. If you are now calculating the process, the complete process recovery from uh, from the clarification to the polishing, we would end up with 41% uh, of the full AAV uh, if using cation exchanger uh, versus 30% if we would be using affinity. A bit different numbers, but quite the same uh, picture still again with uh, chromatography 42% with the full AEV uh, by cation exchanger and 31% with affinity. So we are ending with more material, with about 30% more material in the end, and this heavily reduces our manufacturing costs. What about the impurity removal? So this is comparison of different steps. Um, we see that we have cell DNA, the removal by the cation exchanger and by affinity is quite the same. Uh, quite similar removal of the plasmid DNA uh, and uh, a bit better removal of uh, host cell proteins by uh, uh, cation exchanger than affinity and endo endotoxins removal quite the same. If you are putting this on the SDS page, we don't really see much difference either we purify the material uh, with cation exchanger or with affinity ligand. All this is after uh, the last step after the QA. Uh, and now further, what about uh, the capsids removal? We uh, compared the material from cation exchanger QA with mass spectrometry uh, and also by liquid chromatography. With mass uh, photometry, we see that we have at the end, after the QA, 72% of full and with affinity, just 57 of full. So much more affinity, uh, much more empty capsids. Uh, similar ratios are, uh, are analyzed by the chromatography. Uh, where the separation is not as good with this method uh, we were using at the time. So the empty and the full and more empties with affinity. Uh, so not only the recovery is better, but also the ratio between empty and full using a ion exchanger and an ion exchanger provide better results than using affinity and an ion exchanger. Capacity, capacities are quite the same if we are loading the material after TFF. Uh, so we can count in this case with this serotype, with these conditions to load about 1.5 uh, uh, on E14 particles per 1 ml. Uh, with the cation exchanger, we can load the material directly to the column. Of course, capacity goes down because the chromatins are competing with the AV. So we are uh, losing about uh, 20 times uh, the capacity. But on the other end, uh, we don't need to perform TFF. And we could see at the beginning that TFF is also killing some of the product. With affinity, this would be quite impossible because loading would really take uh, uh, many days. Um, also, the process time uh, using cation exchanger would be with the TFF 30% uh, shorter in comparison to the affinity. And as I mentioned, if you would not perform TFF with affinity, it's quite impossible uh, to load the material if you are dealing with, uh, with uh, large samples. If I kind of sum up, uh, in this study, uh, so when, comp when comparing cation exchanger with affinity resin, you can count on about 30% increase in the final product. So 30% more product, uh, which really heavily reduce your manufacturing cost. Um, secondly, the impurities are comparable. Uh, and the third, you end up with uh, uh, shorter process time and also uh, more uh, full, final full 
uh, in the final product. And now we go ahead with uh, the, the Petfix system we are using, which help us really a lot when we need to develop processes. Uh, we design it, first of all, to develop processes and then later on to serve as in process control. Of course, it can also be used for a product release uh, analytics. Um, before going to this, uh, maybe I, I draw some attention on uh, requests uh, coming from the industry and also from the regulatory bodies, not only to remove empty capsids when we are dealing with AV, but more and more also to remove partials, dense and other species of the AV, which is not the product. So the AV with the gene. Here is one of such letters uh, published by Dark Horse Consulting Group last year uh, directed to, to the FDA. And now we need more analytics to better understand what's going on uh, and also to study how to reduce the, the capsids, which may be regarded as impurity. Um, very important uh, when dealing with the liquid chromatography is to have detectors, to have proper detectors. And as we are dealing with particles, it would be always good to have a detector which can quantify the viral particle immediately in the harvest or even in the upstream sample why? Because we would like to calculate the recovery uh, from the harvest up to the end. We may do this with PCR, uh, but PCR may see also genes which are not packed into the AV. We can do ELISA. Also ELISA uh, would uh, quantify the proteins, VP proteins, viral, uh, viral proteins, although they don't form the particle. Uh, so it's always good to have orthogonal method to be more on the safe side when we calculate the recoveries and design our processes. So in our case, uh, we are using AV8 um, to explore the possibilities of our system. Uh, the only thing what we did, we uh, took the harvest, uh, lowered the pH uh, to about 3.5, filter the material and inject everything to the cation exchange column and we are running the linear gradient from zero salt to 1.5 molar salt. Uh, the pH once again was about 3.5. If you are just checking the UV and in mo all my further present, uh, slides, the UV 280 will be blue and the UV 260 would be red, we would have a lot of peaks. Uh, some others in the flow through, some other in CRP. If we connect in line the multi light scattering detector, uh, multi light scattering detector would usually show several peaks, but the highest usually would correspond to the AV. By this, you can also uh, kind of uh, sign this peak, you peak to, to the AV. But more importantly, if we calculate the area here, or if we uh, measure the height of this peak, basically this would be uh, estimate of our AV in the harvest, or AV, not just the full one. What about the impurities? Um, for this, we are using dual channel fluorescent detector. The first channel we set uh, towards the tryptophan excitation. And all these peaks represent proteins or protein related peaks. So we can really boost the sensitivity when comparing to V by one or two order of magnitude. The second channel we set toward peak, uh, towards the peak, picogreen excitation. We know that the DNA does not fluorescent. So we uh, put some picogreen to the sample before injection. Picogreen sticks to all DNA related impurities and we can boost the signal for the DNA. And this uh, picogreen DNA HPLC method can serve us also to, uh, to check for removal of uh, not only DNA, but especially chromatin structures. And these uh, signals also would serve us 
as orthogonal method to the Lowry. So and this would serve us as an orthogonal method to the usual Pico-Green method. Um, the only possibility to connect more detectors and to have some other features was actually to develop our own liquid chromatography system. No other system at the moment on the market allows all these different things to be connected and using just one software. So we also developed the software. So once again, we separate the material by one injection and then we go first through UV detector. After this, multi light scattering detector is connected. And then the third one is uh, fluorescent detector, dual channel. Um, important to mention, uh, we are providing a specially designed multi light scattering detector, much cheaper, uh, but also more reliable because it was really optimized as a detector, not as a standalone uh, multi light scattering uh, machine. Uh, now we have several detectors, sometimes we input some other detectors. Uh, uh, it would be ways to use this setup of detectors just to, to use it with chromatography column. Uh, so we developed a special, uh, a special apparatus which allows us to pump the material from the centrifuge after centrifugation directly to the detectors. So how we do it? So we perform the separation of empty and full and other capsids by just usual ultra centrifuge. Um, depending on the material, we can take the smallest tube, we can take a bit bigger tube. And then with a special uh, system, we push the liquid out uh, after the centrifugation through the HPLC capillary direct, directly to the HPLC detectors. And this is the constant flow through the detector so we would be monitoring again what comes out first it would be full capsids uh, presenting here and then at the end would be empty capsids and represented here so we bypass the column no column is used here just ultra centrifuge directly to the detectors and the fraction collector after can, may also be used um, we performed one such experiments because we wanted to see what we really get and how to improve the purification. So uh, this is now, we call it centrifugram. So it is uh, recording. Uh, so it's presenting the recording by three different detectors, what is coming out from the centrifuge. This is conductivity, uh, so quite uniform flow. So this is very bottom of the tube, uh, the first material comes out. Then after this first hay or dense capsids would come out and then the full capsid, the partial potentially and empty capsids. We took the same sample. We wanted to separate it or purify it with Q column and that's the peak. Uh, and we went further with these things and we wanted to better understand what is what. For this, uh, we sent our samples to Megadalton Solutions why? Because uh, we have seen their publication dealing with uh, two-dimensional uh, separation of AV capsids, one by mass and one by charge. Uh, we see that the empties are very heterogeneous. Partials are also very heterogeneous. Fulls are less heterogeneous, but still uh, every dot represents the full and some dense materials uh, being here. And uh, this is how the material after our uh, cation exchange uh, column purification looks like. So again, uh, again quite a lot of uh, empties, some partials and some fulls. We don't really see any heavy in this case. Um, and then we go further. We basically just analyzed the ultra centrifuge fraction two, which is the full. We indeed could uh, concentrate the fulls, but we still have some partials. We still have some heavy, uh, some 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 uh, empty capsids. Also, by chromatography, uh, we could uh, concentrate the fulls, but we still have partials and empties. So, neither of the two methods really purify the material uh, so so well. So, after seeing this. Uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, chart, 
uh, it came to our conclusion that uh, probably we need to more unify the capsets to maybe improve the resolution. And we are playing with different species uh, added just to the buffers, uh, and we were able to improve the resolution. So this is the material, uh, AAV material, which we loaded uh, first uh, on the column with regular or perform the chromatography with our regular standard buffers, which is basically pH 9.0, uh, one molar salt, and we run linear gradient, uh, and UV fluorescent and multi-light scattering detector. None of them really uh, provides a baseline separation because the column did not provide a baseline separation. Uh, we just edit some species to the buffer A and B. We perform just the same gradient, just on the same column, and we are able to improve the resolution, having empties, having a bit of partials here, and having fulls, and having some dense or heavies or whatever, or destroyed particles here. Uh, we always like to use tryptophan fluorescent because Using tryptophan fluorescent, you basically can estimate the amount of the full without uh, kind of using extinction coefficients calculations here or using some other uh, calculation methods with multi light scattering detector. So we see that this material has about 31% of the full. Can this be scaled up? Yes, we performed scale up, so just the same method, an analytical scale. We went to one ml column, uh, and this is the empty, this is the partial, uh, this is the full, and there are some other destroyed heavy capsules or whatever. So we took the fractions uh, and we analyzed them uh, back on the same analytical method. And we see that the fraction three, UV here, and fluorescent. So the fraction three fluorescent detector shows us. Uh, a bit more than 90% of fulls, so still some partials. If you check the recovery with PCR, also this fraction has the most of the of the fulls, so close to 90%. Some of them are uh, later on, uh, but probably these genes are not anymore properly packed. Uh, also, these partials, uh, that is probably not proper packing. So the product is only here. Uh, we need to avoid to add these ones and these ones uh, to our product to improve the recovery. We are not satisfied with 90%. So we went further. Uh, we found some additional species which allowed us to now run uh, two different gradients, first with the buffer A and buffer B, in this case, linear gradient. And then we are adding the buffer C to kick out the fulls. So how it looks now, um, the empties eludes in the buffer A, buffer B. Uh, the partial starts to elute with uh, high concentration of buffer P. And then to elute the fulls, we need to go to the buffer C. And at the highest concentration of the buffer C, we also get out these heavy damaged particles or whatever. So this is analytical uh, column. This is the prep column. Uh, empties, partials, and the fulls. And here we can even see that we have two full peaks. We went further. Uh, so this is zoom in of the two full peaks. We analyzed the empties. It's really nice, pure empty peak here. And we also analyzed the full, uh, the E2, the first part of the full, and E3, the second part of the full. Both of them are really pure, almost nothing. We basically uh, are claiming could reach 99% of uh, pure full AV, but the retention time of this and this one is a bit different. So at least two populations are present in this, uh, in this peak, maybe even more. So this is something we are going to explore further on because we know that also fools may carry some of the uh, fragments of host cell DNA. Uh, we'll see if we can do something here as well. Um, and this was AV8, now AV9. The AV9 is far more tough to separate. 
uh, but also here uh, we are able to find species which allows us uh, to perform the separation of empty and fulls. Uh, the AV sample we divided first, uh, we, we run some ultra centrifuge with our pet fix detectors. So we see on the UV some dense, some, uh, some fulls, a bit of partials, almost nothing, and empties. Uh, we see no separation with our uh, standard method, and uh, mass photometry shows us we have uh, more empties, like almost 60%, and just about 40% of fulls. So with this, we went further, and again, by playing with uh, three different species, with three different buffers, we are able to separate empties and the partials and the full uh, at the end coming out already quite pure. So we analyzed now these fractions, uh, so mass spectrometry uh, before purification, and this is now the fraction three, where we see most of the uh, the full AV9 capsids. We could reach more than 90% of AV9 just in one chromatographic step. If you uh, calculate this with the fluorescent, uh, detector with HPLC, we would even see 98%. Uh, the PCR also shows us more than 90% uh, recovery. Uh, there are some uh, genes still in the tailing, but the tailing, uh, if you put it here, we see that we have uh, quite a mixture of fulls and empties, so uh, we need to be a bit careful with this uh, tailing. I would not use it because we still need to do some further analytics to better understand what was going on. Uh, to enable uh, the, to run now these uh, this new, new methods, especially new methods, but also uh, old methods, uh, when we would like to perform step gradients, uh, we had to develop uh, uh, columns, which basically are much narrower by acceptance criteria, scale to scale, batch to batch. So we are aiming for uh, to have a release criteria based now on the AAV8 elution. Uh, so the amount of the salt which is needed to elute the AAV8 uh, and the amount of the salt should be plus minus 3%. So these are now our uh, criteria for our new product line which stand, uh, so uh, HR line, which stands for high reproducibility. So once again, we are now providing the columns, which would allow us much easier scaling up and also much more robust scaling up and also batch to batch uh, reproducibility. Um, to develop these things, uh, it took us almost five years. Why? Because first of all, we had to, method uh, which is really based on the AV. We found out that uh, qualification of chromatographic column using ion capacity or, or any other small molecule test would give us no idea of column behavior when it comes to empty full separation. So if you compare uh, the, the columns which we measured, um, our columns measured by ion capacity, and by the amount of salt which is needed to elute the empty capsid from our column, we see no correlation. Uh, so we had to end up with uh, with different method, so with really AAV-based method. Um, the monolith is one single piece. So how we do it? Uh, we take monomers and porogenes and we start the polymerization in the mold. Uh, the size and the shape of the mold basically define the size and the shape of chromatographic column. After polymerization, we take the polymer out, we do surface chemistry, and then we would cut top and the bottom of the cylinder uh, to be basically just of the height uh, uh, which is needed to uh, pack it to the housing. So how the housing look like, we have a body with spiral distributor which allows for very homogeneous distribution of the material over all the surface, outer surface of the monolith. So this white stuff is a monolith. And then chromatography is performed through the 
thickness of the cylinder. So the length of the chromatographic column in our case is thickness of the cylinder. So basically we are dealing with kind of uh, radial chromatography. Then there is a, 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 a porous membrane in to basically allow for uh, no particle to come out. So kind of membrane and piston to lower the depth volume. So as you could see, we are dealing with one single piece. Uh, so we cannot just cut something away and and uh, and analyze it. But the idea was quite the same as when you buy 100 liters of porous particles. You take maybe 10, 100 milliliter, you pack small column, it performs well, and you conclude your 100 liter batch is okay. As already mentioned, we are cutting the top ring and the bottom ring to basically shape the, or size the monolith to be able to pack to the housing. And we decided now to approach or to have similar approach than with porous particles. So take small sample uh, from here, take small sample from here, maybe also from here and from here, and put it into O-ring, so the monolith from here. We put it in the monolith, so we have a special tool uh, to cut uh, with very precise measures and also not to, to, to damage or fracture the, the, the monolith uh, to get these discs, put them in the O-ring, and then we pack small column. We call this specimen. Why? Because uh, it should basically give us an idea if uh, this piece of the monolith or this piece of the monolith corresponds to the property of the complete column. So we had to basically perform quite a number of tests to prove this, which we did. Uh, one of them on the eight, uh, ATML QA column. So the disc from the top, the disc from the bottom, we performed empty full separation. The empty caps it and loot it at 9.2, uh, at around 9.2 uh, molar, millimolar salt. Uh, also the bottom, I loot it at similar uh, amount of the salt, so potassium chloride, uh, and we are looking for the peak, so uh, where the peak height, so this one a lot, so that's our measurement. We put the housing uh, to the, so we put the monolith to the housing and we now load it, the empty full, on the complete column and we see that also the complete column uh, behave similar than the top and the bottom monolith. We took the monolith out and we cut it further, or rings from the bottom, mid and top, and we also analyzed these three rings or these three discs. And we can see that also in the middle or in the top or the bottom of the monolith, uh, the elution of the AV8 at 9.2 plus minus is basically matched. So we are fitting to the acceptance criteria. Uh, and we can also confirm by this that the monolith is really homogeneous. Doesn't matter either the pieces from here, from here, from here, from here, from here. It would behave similar or very similar than the complete column. We performed tests also with 800 ml columns. Uh, here is one such example. So again, bottom disc, top disc, uh, the complete column, and then the three disc from the rings, which we cut it afterwards. Also nice reproducibility, plus minus 2% RSD. It is now also easy to compare 800 ml, 8 liter column and 80 ml column, because we don't compare the, the, the complete column anymore, we just compare specimens. If you run the linear gradient, and we prefer always to run linear gradient when we do empty full separation, because it's more sensitive, it's more accurate. Of course, once you know that you always have here the welly, you can easily now turn this to the step gradient. But to be sure that this is possible, you first need to perform linear gradients. We see that the specimen of 80, 800, and 8 liter columns really nicely overlap. So we did a good job, and uh, we also then went further. 
we had to kind of align our small columns to be scaled down models. Uh, due to the void volume in our old housing, the one, four and eight ML housings, we had to redesign the one, four and eight ML monoliths and housings. So uh, here are the old measures and here are the, the, the new measures. So the bold ones. Um, and with this redesign of the columns, we are now able to really have scale to scale, batch to batch reproducibility when it comes to the empty or the full capsids or the valley between them. Elution. Uh, so we here uh, normalized all the elutions for 1 ml, 4 ml, 8 ml, uh, and three specimens, which you could see already before. So the reproducibility plus minus 0.4% of the six measurements. Uh, again, now you can be sure that if you turn this valley now to the step, you will have very consistent scalability. Uh, in addition to our new method where these two peaks really are baseline separated, we believe that uh, separation of empty full uh, with our QA HR program should not really be any more of an issue. So to uh, sum up, we took uh, the small specimen from the top and also from the bottom and we tested it. And if we meet the release criteria, we would sell the column for you. Otherwise, we are not going to sell the column to you if we would not, if it, it would not meet this criteria. At the moment, with this AV batch, the release criteria uh, are 92.3 millimolar potassium chloride plus three minus three percent of all the columns which are of, of the HR program. Uh, for the empty capsid in linear gradient. So once again, uh, all of the columns we are releasing are now tested with the specimen. We proved that the specimen really provides the idea about the performance of the complete column. Um, we, using this kind of approach, we need to throw away about half of our products. This is why the price is a bit higher. Um, you can also perform similar approach uh, testing of these columns because each of the column will also come with the specimen, uh, but uh, this requires quite some work. Maybe you don't want to do it, but if you'd like, you can do it. You can also get specimen with the column. More important for you would be to perform the test with small molecules, which is not straightforward, but it would give you an idea if something went wrong with the shipment of the column. So to conclude, we believe that replacing affinity approach with a strong cation exchange approach would end up with at least 10% better recovery uh, of your uh, process from harvest to the to the to the fill and finish, uh, which really uh, cut, cuts down uh, the manufacturing costs a lot. Uh, you get more product in the end of the story. Uh, your development would be much faster because uh, cation exchanger monolith is much faster than any other porous space media. Um, with our new uh, method to separate empty and full, we improved the traditional method by five to 10 times, depending on the serotypes. Uh, this should allow you not only to get rid of empties, but even more important to get rid of partials, heavy capsids and similar stuff. And um, yeah, with our new SIMQA HR program, uh, HR product line, which is available on the market already since October, uh, you would be able uh, to finally use our columns in step gradients without any concern um, and also uh, basically have less issues with development of your chromatographic processes. Worth to mention in the end, we are running uh, uh, summer school, summer symposia every second year. Next one will be uh, in Porto Roche, 10th of, uh, uh, so from the 3rd to the 7th of June next year. Uh, it is also combined virtual meeting, uh, but we still uh, like to see people on also on spot. 
uh, we would also perform some lab work, some wet lab work material. Uh, and it is really a gene therapy oriented, uh, novel vaccine oriented event dealing with nucleic acids and viral particles of uh, any kind. There will be quite a number of uh, customers using our columns for years, especially to separate mRNA plasmids and AV capsids. Um, there is still possibility to, uh, to get an oral presentation. So the deadline for abstract is uh, main, uh, is February 29th for poster end of March. Uh, uh, it's still possibility to, to basically send abstracts. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, I will have uh, some time now for some questions, but if not enough, uh, feel free to, to, to send me an email or contact us uh, via our company uh, company webpage. Okay, so now I see uh, some question. So how long is the process using novel QA method compared to traditional resin? So I don't know to traditional resin. Uh, I can give you just an idea about uh, the novel QA method in comparison to our old QA method. Uh, in principle, it is quite the same, just uh, the illusion is a bit longer. So we are talking about 10, 20% longer time when comparing with our traditional method. So just the elution, usually it's a bit longer, but loading, uh, column washing, all the rest is just the same. Just the elution is uh, maybe double the time in comparison to the our old method. You can go next. Uh, yes, the, our aim is to provide um, the HR program, not only with our prepper two columns, but also with our 96 well plates and also our CIMA columns. Uh, I believe we are planning to release uh, CIMAC uh, uh, QA HR uh, and 96 well plate uh, QA HR uh, somewhere beginning of next year. So yes, and this will be basically then uh, linking not only the prep columns, but also linking the 96 well plates. So we would be able to use the 96 well plates for uh, the OE experiment and then go directly to the uh, larger scale QA column, HR column. Next one. Yeah, this one is similar. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit longer. Uh, maybe 10, 20% complete method. If we are just looking on dilution, it's kind of doubled the dilution with uh, comparing to our traditional method. And next one. Yeah, with 99% uh, uh, full, uh, if we just collate, of course, the full recover, just the full um, taking the time that uh, PCR is also showing some uh, genomes which are not in a full particle. We are able to reach more than ninety percent recovery, uh, even more towards ninety-five percent recovery. Once again, not by PCR, but by really just collecting the full. So we need to analyze the full uh, before purification and compare this with the full after the purification. Uh, vector genome we are losing depending on. Uh, on the sample, how much the sample is already damaged or maybe uh, how upstream was working to get some genomes out of uh, the full particle. Next one. Yeah, um, so the columns are now plus minus 3%. If they don't fit, uh, they would uh, not be qualified anymore. Um, and this is something which you basically should be able to, to, to achieve. Uh, if you switch to step gradient, uh, if you get the column on very one end and one on the very other end, there should be not more than 3% difference. Next one. Is there a difference in purity and recovery? Yes, of course, the purity uh, usually uh, 
with our old traditional method, we could reach, depending on the serotype, between 70 to 90 percent. Now we can always be more than 95 percent, even more than 98 percent. Recovery is comparable. Uh, once again, uh, it's not comparable if you compare it by PCR because some of the genomes are out of the full capsids, are in some partial sometimes or in some uh, dense uh, capsids. Um, if you really look on the recovery of the really full particle, then we can be far more than 90 percent. Next one. Is there any new question? OK. Uh, please let me know uh, if somebody would like to uh, to to give another question. Uh, we'll wait a bit. If not, then, uh, yeah, we are in any case uh, uh, close to time. Uh, I, I would like to thank you once again uh, to, to participate in this uh, presentation. And uh, any further question, please uh, turn directly to us. Uh, uh, we are more than happy to give you more insight of what you are doing and, uh, and uh, what we are able to provide to you. Uh, enjoy the day and uh, keep in touch. All the best. Bye-bye.